This bank vault's door weighed 20 tons while its walls were also fitted with iron. The builders didn't even put a security alarm in the bank vault because it was considered as an unbreakable vault. But some years later, a group of robbers made a master plan and dodged the security for 27 hours. Before talking about Nazarene's master plan and why it is considered as the biggest bank robbery in history, let us go straight to July 19, 1976. It was a sunny day in Nice, France, and everything was going as usual in the Societe Generale Bank. Till today, this bank is known for having the most secure bank vault in the entire world. On that day, the bank staff were opening the bank vault as per their daily routine, but the door didn't open even after a couple of attempts. As mentioned earlier, this door weighed 20 tons and used to get stuck frequently, so the staff didn't think of it as a big problem, but little did they know, something big was about to happen. The staff then decided to contact the company who made the vault. After a few minutes, the experts arrived and started to open the vault. But the surprising thing is that even the experts couldn't open the vault. The matter was getting serious now because the customers were waiting to make the transactions. Finally, after three hours, they decided to drill a hole in the wall of the vault to see what was stuck in the door. After drilling, they saw that someone had welded and closed the door of the vault from the inside. The staff couldn't believe their eyes because there was only one way to enter the wall. Neither there was any light inside it nor any window. It was impossible to go inside the vault. Now seeing this, everyone realized that there is definitely something abnormal here. To conduct further investigation, the staff members decided to break the wall using machines and go inside. However, this process took hours as these walls were much thicker compared to normal walls. After hours, they created a hole large enough for a person to go in. When the staff member went in, the scene was just unbelievable. The bank wall was robbed. Some lockers were broken and some were lying open. The most interesting thing was that these famous alphabets were written on the wall with spray paint. The wordings were in French, but it translates to without arms, without hate, without violence. The police force arrived by that time and they saw a tunnel dug in the ground. Out of 4,000 safe boxes containing money and gold blocks, they broke open 400 safe boxes and escaped with valuables from inside. The tunnel dug was coming out in the city's largest underground sewage line. While investigating the sewage line, the police found tools, gas cylinders, ventilation equipment, and a one kilometer long electrical cable. The heist was approximately 60 million francs and was considered as the biggest bank heist of the century. For the next several months, the police worked day and night to find the robbers. They arrested suspects from the surrounding areas and even interrogated the vault staff, but didn't get much success. Then, three months later, in October 1976, the police got a huge lead. A member of a gang of robbers had been caught on a tip from his own girlfriend. After a few tricks, he burst into tears and named the entire gang. The police were shocked when they found out that this gang was known for doing small robberies. But it was hard to believe that a gang like this could carry out such a big operation. After a few more interrogations, they found out that the mastermind of the heist was someone else. A man named Albert Spaghiari was actually a photographer. When the police arrested him, they didn't think he was a criminal. The man had simple dressing, a simple lifestyle, and a small house on the outskirts. The police even asked Albert's neighbors, but everyone in the neighborhood said that he was just a sincere photographer. Out of the blue, Albert claimed that he was behind the heist. Now, the case was almost closed according to the police as someone accepted that they were the criminal. Little did they know that this was just the start. According to Albert, he assembled a team of skilled individuals, each with their own expertise. They studied the bank's layout, security systems, and routines, identifying weak points and potential entry points. Spaghiari was aware that the bank's vault had layers of security, including reinforced concrete walls. To conduct further research, he bought a locker inside the vault and he used to go in the vault to capture photographs. 
Then, he took out a map of the neighborhood and calculated how the team could enter the vault. He found out that they could dig a 26 feet tunnel from the sewage line which would take them straight into the vault. Under the cover of darkness, Spaghiari and his team entered the labyrinth sewers of Nice. Equipped with maps, blueprints, and tools, they meticulously navigated the intricate underground passages. This arduous journey required careful navigation and teamwork to avoid detection. They tunneled for several weeks, silently making their way closer to the bank's basement. After reaching the bank's basement, Spaghiari's team faced the daunting task of penetrating the vault's reinforced concrete walls. They meticulously drilled holes into the wall using specialized tools to avoid triggering any alarms or alerting security personnel. This process required precision and patience to ensure minimal noise and disruption. Once inside the vault, Spaghiari and his team were greeted by an array of riches, including stacks of cash, jewelry, and other valuable items. They swiftly and methodically collected the loot, carefully selecting the most valuable items and ensuring minimal damage to the surroundings. After looting for approximately 27 hours, they took valuables worth 60 million francs. After all the interrogation, he was taken to court. During the interview, he had written the evidence of his plan and the details of the looted amount in code word on a paper. He said that he will give this evidence only to the judge, which was also a plan, and only the judge will be able to read this code word. For this purpose, the judge called Albert to his room. Once the judge started decoding the language, Albert jumped out of the window, landing in the parking lot, and escaped with his team. Even after a lot of tries, the police couldn't find him. Many years later, he appeared on a TV show in Italy in which he said that since the age of 12, I used to be very fond of treasures and I fulfilled this hobby with this heist. After that, nobody knew where he was. Albert died in 1989 and his dead body was found outside his house. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you want more videos like this one, let us know in the comments down below. Also, make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. We will see you in the next video. Till then, bye!